it is actually something like passive teaching sir we wait for five more minutes and sir sorry yeah we we do not get any response from the students yeah exactly and sometimes it is very difficult to make out whether they are there or not <laughs> <laughs> i should call that's a blind assumption <laughs> For M Tech courses, it is okay, but for B Tech courses, the class strength is of the order of 175 or so. Yeah. Professor Amit Prasant is getting or uh, receiving this award. Do I have any function? Is there any function? So he he will come here. Uh, it ah, is on fourteenth right. of March. Fourteenth of March. Good good. It is age is an achievement really for us. Ah, yes, Normally, sir. people receive beyond fifties, beyond sixties. <laughs> <laughs> it is age. I think I am very happy that he got it. No, he is doing well. <laughs> In yeah, all of course, he's doing well. There's no doubt on that. Teaching, research, consultancy, and administration also. Yeah, yeah. So he is doing well. And also the COVID management is a very tough job. Sir. Is it still cold there in uh, Rukhi? Sir, is it still cold in uh, Rukhi? Ah, yes, sir. Ah, uh -huh. it's still cold. Here it warmed up, but like anything. No, I think uh, last year also till uh, Holi it was cold. Yeah, वो तो है. ट्रेडिशन में दिवाली से थोड़ी तक हाँ सर ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स मंथ्स Sir, we'll uh, wait for another two, three minutes, and then start, sir. Yeah, as you feel. Okay. Unless people start going away. <laughs> <laughs> I request all the participants to mute your audio. Thank you. 
सर विल स्टार्ट सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग आंध्र यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अंड इंडियन ज्योटिकल सोसाइटी विशाखापन चाप्टर ऐ एक्सटेड ए वाम वेलकम टू यू आल टू दि वेबिनार आ जियो सिंथेटिक्स फर् सस्टनबल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर being organized on the occasion of uh, world engineering day which is uh, proclaimed in the year 2019 by unesco so we are fortunate uh, to have with us the president of indian geotechnical society professor uh, narendra kumar samadhiya he is a professor at uh, indian institute of technology roorkee so thank you sir for making it uh, convenient to grace the occasion and we'll be happy to hear uh, a few words uh, from you before going to the lecture so i, I thank uh, professor jv rao sir for accepting our request uh, to deliver the lecture on the topic of geosynthetics for uh, sustainable infrastructure because uh, world engineering day uh, theme is uh, Uh, devoted to sustainability development so in their direction now uh, we have chosen this topic and the sar has uh, obliged our request most of you may be knowing uh, professor jv rao sar uh, just like we have carl terzighi as father of soil mechanics we can say professor jv rao as uh, father of geosynthetics in india he is authority in that uh, subject so all of you I hope you, are, you will gain a lot of information on uh, geosynthetic materials, uh, their varieties, their functions, and uh, function-based uses of geotextiles, and how best we can use them in uh, difficult uh, working conditions. So, hope uh, all of you will find uh, the contents of lecture very useful uh, for your. Uh, profession and careers and uh, before going into the uh, special lecture in the webinar i request tejasvi uh, former uh, postgraduate student of uh, geotechnical engineering to offer prayer tejasvi yes sir good evening everyone shakti sahita ganapati शक्ति सहित गणपति शंकर विरक्त सकल मुनिवर सुरराज विनुत गुरु भक्ता पोषण भवसुत विनायक मुक्ति मुक्ति प्रद भूषितंगम रक्त पद भुज भावयामी मुक्ति मुक्ति प्रद भूषितंगम रक्त पद भुज भावयामी bhavayami thank you thank you dsp now i request uh, uh vihas scholar of the department uh, m nagalakshmi she is uh, dst inspire uh, fellow she will be introducing uh, professor jv rao sir though majority of you are aware of him as a formality he will uh, give a very brief uh, introduction of uh, professor jv rao nagalakshmi okay sir good evening everyone first of all i would like to thank professor jv rao sir for accepting our invitation to deliver his lecture on the eve of uh, world engineering day uh, we feel happy to announce that uh, professor jv rao sir has Uh, obliged andhra university's request to serve as visiting professor and now he is with us dr gv rao had a distinguished career from 1975 to 2007 at iit delhi serving as professor and head of the department and dean of students he guided 24 phd and over 100 mtech theses while authoring over 200 research papers he developed and initiated the very first geosynthetics laboratory in the country and the first masters program in transportation engineering at iit delhi he voluntarily resigned from iit delhi in the year 2007 subsequently he served as the visiting professor from 2007 to 2012 uh, 
in Osmania University. During 2010 to 2013, he served as an independent director, ITCON International Limited, Ministry of Railways. Since 2016, he is a visiting professor in civil engineering at IIT Gandhi Nagar. Professor Rao is a fellow of IIE, fellow of INAE, and an honorary fellow of the Indian Geotechnical Society. Currently, he chairs the Bureau of Indian Standard Standards Panel to draft a code of practice on geosynthetics reinforced soil structures. He is the convener of the IRC H4 subgroup on the use of marginal and waste materials in highway structures. A recipient of many awards of the International Geosynthetic Society, Indian Geotechnical Society, and CBIP, he was recognized by the Institution of Engineers India as an eminent engineering person by the Dr. K. L. Rao Memorial Lecture Award in the year 2015. He has delivered the Emil Arvind Memorial Award Lecture, New Delhi, and Professor N. V. L. N. Rao. Endowment Award Lecture at IE India at Hyderabad in the year 2019. Over the years, he has involved with many institutions such as NHAI, NTPC, NHPC, Gujarat Government, Water Resources and R&B Department, LND Geostructures, Mega Engineering, Jaipur Development Authority, Vidarbha Water Resources Corporation, Nagpur, and the Geosynthetic Industry. He authored Airport Engineering in 1992. Principles of Transportation and Highway Engineering in 1996, published by Tata Madhuri, New Delhi, and co-authored Highway Material Testing and Quality Control, published by IK Publishers, New Delhi. His first book on engineering with geosynthetics, published by Tata Madhuri, New Delhi, in the year 1990, has received international recognition through NHI, FSWA, USA. Since 2007, he has documented his experiences through many books. Co-authored with renowned experts and practicing engineers on various aspects of geosynthetic applications, including geosynthetic testing, landfills, erosion control, and natural fiber geotextiles, he organized a large number of training programs and workshops to promote geosynthetic technology in the country. Professor Rao is currently the chairman, Geosynthetic Te Technology Advisory Services, Jaipur. and head geosynthetics division and advisor r&d landmark material testing and research laboratory jaipur the only nabl accredited laboratory in india for 410 geosynthetics testing with this introduction i now invite professor gv rao sir to deliver his lecture thank you just uh, just a second nagalakshmi so before uh, professor gv rao sir delivers his uh, lecture on the topic i invite uh, professor narendra samadhiya Uh, to address the participants on the occasion of uh, World Engineering Day. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, Professor G. V. Rao, he was my teacher when I was uh, doing my PhD at IIT Delhi. So, actually, for the first time, uh, we were uh, uh, we our batchmate were introduced to geosynthetics. so at that time this course was recent developments in geotechnical engineering so i attended his lecture and uh, from there whatever i could do something in geosynthetics it is the actually the root is from uh, lectures of professor gv rao so thank you so much uh, uh, professor reddy for inviting me uh, for this particular lecture today is the world engineering day and uh, uh today morning only there was a workshop organized by igs uh, delhi chapter so in which this cpt code uh, was discussed so there were various presentations so uh, and uh, in the evening we are fortunate enough to listen to uh, professor gv rao as uh, uh, everybody knows that uh, and professor reddy also has said that He is the father of geosynthetics engineering in India. His uh, contributions, not only in academics but in practice, are immense. So we are fortunate today that we are listening to uh, Professor G. V. Rao, and I am sure that all the participants will get benefited by his lecture today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, for gracing the occasion for your. Uh... Encouraging words. 
So thank you very much for uh, sparing some time out of your schedules and for attending this uh, evening webinar, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Professor G. V. Rao, sir, to deliver his uh, lecture. Please, sir. Is screen visible? Hello? Ah, yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. Dear Professor Samadhiya and Professor Sachan Edigaru, they delight to meet you at least through the web system and address the participants who are Certainly at Andhra University and the members of the IGS chapters. Now, IGS I've been closely involved as some of the SR knows uh, since I joined IDW and uh, at the time was being tutored by Professor Rama, Ramamuthi, who is of course a doyen for the society itself, who founded the um, most the modern systems in those days, first 1978 conference, the difference like that. So under his tutelage, naturally we grew along with the society so to be once more with the Indian Angel Society is something uh, a great pleasure. And all of you know that I belong to my home state is Andhra Pradesh. And uh, to be involved with uh, Andhra University is a delight and a pleasure. And uh, I deeply respect the sentiments expressed by Professor Redigaru. And uh, we hope that uh, we'll be able to do something together such that uh, the system, the student system gets benefit now. So I would like to especially thank uh, both of you, both Professor Madhya and uh, Professor Chanadigaru, for giving this opportunity to me uh, to share my views on the subject. And uh, one thing, of course, uh, I want to say that the topic is chosen by the organizer, Professor Edigaru, with which I am delighted to take up the subject. But, uh, you know, a lot of curious are uh, mentioned against me always, you know, from the beginning. I think we should realize that being an academician, we have gathered a lot of strength from our students, both PhD, master's students, and of course, UG students also. We have done a lot of research work, we have done a lot of consultancy. So all these works actually uh, have allowed us to grow with this along with the subject and gain confidence. I think that is more important. So whatever I'm presenting also is not my individual work actually, it is the work done. Uh, with everybody, primarily the PhD and PhD students, and also the practice of the subject, uh, more so since I left IIT. In fact, I have done more work in the field after 2007, uh, because probably I was more free to, at least partly to undertake the work and free from administration also. So thank you once again for giving the opportunity. So the topic today is, as mentioned, geosynthetics for sustainable infrastructure. Uh, I don't want to define what sustainability. I sometimes I get confused also with sustainability, but I think as we keep going, we understand what exactly we mean by that. The first and foremost thing I would like to mention is, uh, ages ago we used to say that uh, geosynthetics have caused a revolution in geological engineering. This was, of course, in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. This was it. Uh, in fact, at one point in time, Mr. Amadeya knows that almost all the students want to work with me for PhD. There are PhD means naturally more than a dozen students want to work with me. And that is the excitement of the subject. It's not about me, it was subject itself now, because it gives us so much opportunities to get into uh, more of geotechnical engineering. <clears throat> Today, of course, we think that uh, geosynthetics is causing revolution, sustainable infrastructure. Uh, more so because I strongly believe in this and which I did amplify, but whatever little bit. Uh, Practice we have done in the country. Now, one thing all of us know that geosynthetics is like an umbrella. It consists of a lot of things below that. Maybe geotextiles, maybe composites, maybe membranes, maybe geogrids. Maybe geogrids and maybe natural geotextiles. So there's so much variety of geosynthetics now. And uh, in this case, the word variety space of life truly holds. 
before the word geosensor come into picture there were what we call as geo fabrics sometimes called a geotessels also and independently there were we can say uh, membranes you can say it's not geo membrane lining they used to call it. canal lining they used to call it. so today we define geosynthetics as a planar that means sheet like polymeric material used in contact with soil rock and or any other geotechnical material now the polymer polymer can be synthetic or natural now today what happened of course is that there is a large classification of materials now so we begin with geotextiles which are essentially as mentioned in the definition uh, sheet like materials a flock kind of materials they are permeable along its plane and across the plane also so the materials which are permeable which are cloth like are called geotextiles today and materials which are exist opposite of this that means which are impermeable are of course called geomembranes and uh, today's of course geosynthesis comprise of many kinds of materials uh, we can classify them under geotextiles geogrids geomembranes geocomposites these are the main varieties you can say there are also other materials geonets geofibers mesh matting geopipes natural fibers jute coir many things are there but we broadly classify them into four different varieties in trying to say that there are four different varieties actually they are all generic varieties in each one there are so varieties now so for example geotextiles we find immediately that slide is uh, can be of two major types there are though there are many other types also we can call them as woven geotextile and non woven geotextile we will have geogrids and uh, probably before that uh, it was geonets which invented and then geogrids and uh, geogrids can be uniaxial and biaxial membranes are of various varieties particularly based upon the uh, kind of polymer we use you know maybe pvc maybe high density polyethylene maybe ldp many things like this and uh, geocomposites of course combinations of uh, two or more of these materials to suit a particular an application so we find that geosynthetics is not one word but it is actually a wide variety and in this variety we begin with the geotextiles we will we will cover them very quickly geotextiles and then we have said already that we can have woven geotextiles and you see they are of course textile like but the kind of texture is different because the kind of weaving pattern is going to different now if you look at closely under a microscope uh, what is it you find we find actually yarns yarns means filaments coming out actually uh, which, which are twisted and that means they are like a thread towards now and uh, woven exactly in up in other directions now one thing we find of course if you are considered one particular yarn it has got number of these filaments for example let us take it that these filaments are of polyester we call very very briefly pet so the polyester filaments are obviously strong filaments now when you put many of them together it becomes a multi filament polyester yarn geotextile okay obviously the number of filaments which are there together in a one single yarn and how they are placed how closely they are placed in weaving or how far away they are placed is going to control its strength is going to control the strength which you often call as uh, say in uh, kilo newton per meter width by meter width why not says we'll come to later the other important point we are going to see is that the other direction another direction of which happened to the direction i have shown you other direction other direction uh, obviously it could be same polyester kind of material it can be thinner yarn it could be also polypropylene it's up to us to design whatever you want but then any kind of weaving pattern you see these uh, intersections at these intersections we have some opening so these openings are depending upon the kind of weaving pattern we choose so they will be same through and through the length and breadth of this cloth now usually this material is about 5.5 meter width these days and it can run into kilometers each uh, roll could be 250 500 meter things like that now in the entire width and length of the cloth now of the geotextile now the openings are going to be same that means they allow far particles to pass through and then of course coarser than larger than particles than this are going to be retained and then also we find that the space between them even in scm also is not uh, very much that means water can possibly pass through and also pa pass along the plane but the kind of water is going to be water content, water flow is going to be very restricted but so what we are trying to say is that the strength of them of these geotextiles is going to depend upon what kind of polymer and how well they are packed and things like this and on the other hand we have the non woven geotextile in non woven geotextile they are blanket like kind of thing you know uh, these two days these days now we want to use rasai but we use these synthetic blankets actually 
So these kind of blankets are, uh, you can easily see how they are made, but then they are not much time for us. So if you see the blanket under an microscope, what is it you find? You find their openings, their opening of different shape and different size. This is a, what we call as needle punch kind of fabric. And then we got here the thermal bond kind of fabric. And in the thermal bond of fabric, you see that now the openings distinctly clear. That means they are different in size and shape both also. Now, this is what our father of Salmukhan should have really wondered to have it, to have had it in defining the, um, what you call, pyramid characteristics, in defining the filter characteristics. We have uh, defined the various kinds of parameters with flow with respect to D60, D10, D10, all kinds of things. Now, in this case, now, directly we know the opening size now. So we don't have to put layers of these soils, actually, layers of the uniform grain soils uh, in order to create a filter or a drain also. Here, we will have that. Uh, the thickness of this could be up to max uh, one centimeter. It could be much lesser than that also. But the point is that now, depending upon the size of the thickness of the material, we are going to have depending on the opening size, which you can decide ourselves and determine also, it is easy for us to at least imagine that they are going to be allowing flow in the in its own plane, in the planar direction, and they filter any material passing perpendicular to this now. We also find that thickness is going to be very light and thickness is going to be very high also. They could have put one centimeter also, it could more than that also. And the common balance now, uh, we do determine thickness is important, but then the quantum of material is known as the grams per square meter. So this kind of material could be about 250 grams per square meter, this kind of material could be uh, 1000 or 1500 grams per square meter. So the greater the grammage which you are going to think of, obviously the flow will be much more than this because the thickness is the one which is going to allow this now. So we can have this uh, arranged in a different different ways now and uh, we can have them bind together by mechanical system. That means no other chemical is there. Sometimes we already said that we can thermally bond them. Sometimes we have chemically bond them also. So we find that there are three varieties of these uh, non nuclear materials. On the other hand, we have the geogrids now, which are functionally different. For example, if you think of uh, placing a geotestile in a pavement structure. Imagine that there is a kind of stress which is going to be there on the top because of the material base or whatever base codes, whatever you got now, and a load is going to be there. If there is a load on this now in the horizontal direction on the geotestile, uh, which is resisting it, the pullout resistance is going to be resisting, resisting that. So you have to pull out that now. What is going to prevent from its pullout? It's only friction at the interface. That means friction on the top layer with the aggregate and bottom layer with the aggregate or soil subgrade. So it's only planar friction which is going to come into picture, but of course on both sides. So in this case, what you find is that you find that the aggregate can get into the void space which is really there now. So by this process, it does a different kind of function. It does a different function. Uh, function means it should interlock the aggregate within this body now. Once interlocking is going to be ahead, obviously, uh, if you have a material load on this material when it's under payment now, so the, the stones are not able to move out actually. They are actually striking through the opening in the geogrid. This is a vaxial kind of geogrid. And so any load, vertical load you are going to apply on the aggregate is going to make a tension appear here now, all around the edges of this sweater opening. So you see that the vertical load is creating tension in the member now. So when once a member, tension is created, what is going to happen now? The tension is going to spread in the neighborhood area. It's going to spread in the neighborhood area also. So that means the stress below the point of application, below the tire is going to be reduced and actually increases at the sides now. This is what we call as stress distribution is going to happen now. On the other hand, now, this was a biaxial geogrid. In the actual geogrid now, uh, which we use uh, commonly for reinforced walls, we find that it's able to resist the uh, tensile force, actually, which is created by the inter interface friction due to the earth pressure now. That means the earth pressure, which is causing, causing load on this and place horizontally, is going to resist, actually, for that moment and behave indirectly like a, uh, like a gravity dam in the sense that it is going to prevent movement of the entire structure, the reinforced structure, but then what is happening is the earth pressure is coming to the member as tension now. See, in both these cases, in actual and actual cases now, we face that the tension being created in the structure because of the way they are going to perform. That is most important. The way the mechanism is going to play is going to be critical. We will see the result of all of them as we keep going. The other point which are going to have is we have got these nets now. In fact, in the country, long ago when we started work, uh, probably in 85 or 86 at IIT and also in the country, we have these nets called a netlon net, which is being made somewhere near Baroda in uh, Gujarat now. So they were making, they talk about making these nets now, and the kind of strength of materials is so low. If you compare a grid kind of strength, it will be something like 250 kilometer per meter. 
if you compare, um, let us say, for geodesic, it will be much, much higher. It could be 1,000 kilonewton per meter. Whereas the strength of these uh, apparently strong looking kind of materials, these units, is very small, is very tiny. It's hardly 3 to 7 kilometer. That means you can break it by your hand also. So, what is going to happen is this kind of thing is not meant for load application, but it's meant to be used for a purpose, which we'll see next. The fourth, uh, the third variety, which are called membranes, uh, is basically barriers for both the for fluid flow, that means both water and uh, uh, air or gas can't pass through that. That means no leachate can go through this. No gases are going to go through that now. Various varieties are there and in that also. So when you come to composites, this is what I said actually. What did we say? A geotextile actually plays uh, any direction now. It is going to act like a filter. It also can also act like a drain. Okay. But presence of this net in between, on either side having a geotextile, is going to enable more capacity of water to flow through this one. That means the discharge capacity of this uh, composite which is like a composite drain now is going to be influenced on the other side here now we got a membrane on one side and all a net on this side now here we got a membrane here and then we got a net here on the top we got a geotextile now if you imagine that we are going to place it actually um, in a basement structure in a basement which is subjected to let us say groundwater up to ground level so naturally if you put this averting the basement wall actually from the outer side actually no water is going to penetrate the basement and any water which is going to come in into the contact with this will be filtered by the geotextile and then coming to this material, vertical I'm talking about, so naturally that can form flow. Now. So we can place any direction we want actually in the sense that the flow is always by gravity only. So the geotextile, the geo net we have placed here is only a spacer actually. It helps us to really carry more water. That's the main thing. Now the other kind of geocomposites also which are very interesting. Here we've got a nanogram on which we find actually fibers. These fibers in this case are uh, probably polyester, but it can also be, for example, a glass fiber now. And uh, more fibers are placed here and more fibers in the other direction now. Now these are tucked into this. They are kind of stitched into this now, like a socks actually. So that process actually of stitching together is really knitting. So some people call it a knitted geotextile, but it's a composite geogrid because there is opening, there is a composite grid because it is going to give the strength also and behind this on which is uh, tucked is the geotextile now. So it becomes a composite. In this case now, reinforcement composite. Earlier composite was a drainage composite now. So like this we can really think of many kinds of uh, systems which are available now and uh, all of them are going to help us in trying to solve the issues in our engineering, the problems which are being faced by the uh, presence of water or the sewage pressure or addition of strength, things like that, all of them can be solved uh, appropriately by looking at a function, a function which will be carried by the a given kind of geosynthetic. Now, all the geos we have described till now are basically synthetic polymers now. By and large, the most common uh, polymers could be polypropylene and uh, polyester. And these are not ordinary polyester and polypropylene. They are specially made for the purpose because they ought to have a high molecular weight they ought to have a endoxyl groups actually, and they should resist to temperature, they should resist to ultraviolet rays. So we have to do a lot of admixtures to make this one. So though I may call it a polypropylene, or though I may call it a membrane, it is never a pure kind of identity polythrene. It is a combination of these mixtures actually, which enables it to perform the task we assigned to it now. So that is one way. Another way could be obviously using natural fibers. So natural fibers can be obviously coil or jute. I'm showing pictures of only coil. So, and then we can have a woven cardiotestyle. We can also have a non woven kind of cardiotestyle. In this case, the functional use of it in a uh, blanket for erosion control this is called a road erosion control blanket, actually. So, I'm happy to tell you that water materials I'm showing you, they're all there being produced in the country to world standard. That means they're also exporting it sometimes, despite the COVID also. So, these geosynthetics now. We can say they are modern engineering construction materials. The main thing they are going to do, which are going to say now, is going to be they modify or improve soil or geological behavior. So what is that they are trying to do? They are trying to improve the natural materials actually by synthesizing product actually. The product is developed or synthesized. So geosynthetics are not synthetic products now. They are essentially made to improve a geological material, maybe soil, maybe rock, maybe bulk waste like flash and maintaining some things like this. 
and then they synthesize actually mind you this is very important for us to understand for a specific function or application in a construction so don't imagine that all of them are going to everything now each one has got a we can say primary function in which can perform very eminently sometimes it will have a secondary function but really it has a tertiary function also so the design as we go further is going to be by a function actually performance in a given structure so this is going to perform a function in a given structure we will see what exactly they are now so repeat now we are going to consider the improvement or modification in the geological material that means soil rock aggregates other kinds of things and then also bulk waste man by, made by man man made bulk waste and then of course the process synthesized for these functions so very important for us to remember as we keep going and then of course so much being made, made in the country this particular thread is still old so what are the major functions now we are not so much time but then it will cause a separation between two dissimilar geotechnical materials that means let us say in this case this is a subgrade and then it's a soft subgrade let us say and we got subbase course one. so if you place a geotester it's going to be separating this one it can reinforce its own plane in a reinforced as such you will see this is what is done naturally it can carry water along its plane it's a drainage kind of thing and then it will filter also filter means it is going to allow water to flow out but then it's not going to allow the particles to come out actually and then it sometimes you know we got this membrane which is not very strong it will perform and very good function so to protect it now we are going to place a nano geotester here now so it is going to be energy absorbent actually and then we we can contain even the nuclear waste also in this body of geotherm all around actually it's a container also it can contain a kind of a gabion basket also concerned now and then a barrier barrier means as i said already a membrane is going to barrier it will not allow water to flow through it will not allow any gas to flow through also so that is a kind of thing so what are the primary functions now separation reinforcement drainage uh, filtration and uh, barrier what are the secondary functions you can say energy absorber and container and of course there are many other kinds of things that are going to happen as we keep going so as early as 1990 just like nagalakshmi mentioned actually when he brought out the first book which is ng juice and the dicks actually it was written like this from washing bed to road bed from foundations on soft soils to land shed control from waste disposal to water reservoir geosynthetics have found an important place for themselves in engineering and construction projects this is not my statement actually this statement is made by corner professor corner uh, who brought the brought out the best book on the subject designing with geosynthetics very recently on this very topic actually the international geosyn society which is service oriented I will produce, uh, I should say, five slides which I am going to show and compare with what you want to do. First thing it says is, did you know, geosynthetics can reduce the use of jagged gates in infrastructure construction by 50% and up to 90% in some cases. Today we have a document called SP59 by IRC which helps you in doing this now. A picture of this is given here also. If you consider the subgrade here now and uh, aggregate layers, let us say subbase and base course. If you consider the aggregate without geosynthetic stabilization, probably it could be something like this. If you are really going to have a geosynthetic in between now, naturally, either here or here, depending upon what you want now. So with geosynthetization, we just want this much only. So here we wanted aggregate which is so thick, and here we mean less so only. So that much reduction is going to be there. And of course, they have data from America. So they say that in the U.S. now, approximately one, th I think 1.6 billion tons of precious stone. Was produced, and uh, this is in 2019 data, and 1,000. I mean, 1.15 billion tons of it was used for road only, road construction only. Imagine the world scenario. Obviously, if you compare whole world's quantity, it's going to be much. Now, this entire 30 tons you can imagine, which may be make a two meter heap, can be replaced by simply 30 kilograms of geosynthetic. The other uh, side of the argument is very interesting. Uh, this may be. If you require 200 trucks actually to carry the aggregate required for project now, and that much can be carried, whatever required in the, in this kind of cases now, can be carried by one single truck. Just see the indirect benefit also. One is that we are saving aggregate, which is not available in plenty in our country. We are always short of aggregate. We are short of uh, uh, both soil and coarse aggregate. Of course, we are short of good sand for construction. We are also short of earth actually. So in these conditions in India naturally. it becomes relevant for us to do that so at iit 
Delhi, we have done a lot of work. We continue to carry out the work at IIT Gandhinagar also and at uh, the Jaipur Laboratory. But one thing we have to remember is, uh, which I, you know, there are a lot of videos actually brought out in iGrip at IIT Gandhinagar. You will find uh, detailed videos on the subject, including PPTs. I'm just illustrating one of them only. If you imagine that rutting is going to cause by number of rotations. If you have on the horizontal axis number of load rotations, and uh, the rut depth only we are considering now. So you find that <clears throat> without geocentric, naturally, how fast the rutting is going to grow. And with the geocentric now, this is the kind of change which is going to be occurring. That means we are able to apply probably three to ten times actually of the number of rotations for a given rut depth by using geocentric. So that is the kind of thing. You properly specified and installed geosensor can be cost effective and improve the performance and durability of payments. The next one. The next thing which they want out is geosynthetics protect the environment from landfill waste contamination. Landfills is of course a great thing. Uh, there a lot of data which we produce, you know. Uh, there was a workshop held at Andhra University as early as in 2010. We brought out a book, Engineering Landfills. Now, a lot of data, Indian data, the data is given now, and uh, how much waste we're producing in each state was all given by CPCB, uh, that is for the Central Project Control Board for the hazardous waste, and of course the Minister of Environment Forest for the uh, municipal solid waste. Now. So, as far as the, I think probably who is concerned, the world's, world creates more than 2 billion tons of municipal solid waste a year, with at least a third of that not managed in safe, safe way. We have dumps only, uh, with waste expected to grow by at least 3 billion tons by 2050. It is vital that it is managed responsibly to prevent disease and groundwater. Probably, maybe if I ten years back when I went to Visakhapatnam, they were saying that all the city's waste had to carry to the landfill, which is 27 kilometers away in those days. I don't know if they're still there or maybe far away. So, geosynthetics are not only essential in creating the infrastructure and environmental productions. The human race is every day, but are a vital component of waste management by helping to contain the waste within landfills and water treatment facilities. If by any chance you come to a house, which is in the, you can say in the, uh, within the city, I am just within one kilometer of the inner ring road, I find that I am living in a dustbin actually. All around the plastic waste, the municipal waste, every kind of waste we produce here. So that is the process of city, whatever the newspapers and politicians say, that is the kind of picture which we have now. Oh, we have done so much work on subject from IIT Delhi and also from many other angles. The other important uh, general feeling is choosing geosynthetics offers the best of both worlds in cost effectiveness and sustainability. I will go into more detail on this now. So, geosynthetics provide, of course, significant reduction in construction time, immediate visibility, and less long term maintenance. For example, in India, we find that instead of constructing a regular reinforced concrete wall, we can construct what, we, what people in India call RE wall. Actually, it means a geosynthetic reinforced solid wall with the straps, actually, and the concrete fascia. Now, these are being done, I think, since few decades in India. We find that the economy achieved in this can be anywhere between 10 to 30, 40 percent. In fact, most of the contractors prefer using geosynthetics for considering a wall. The very first wall done in the country has been built in 1986 in Ludhiana. And this picture of that, I have shown you the picture earlier also. So this is the kind of uh, conference we had. Mind you, in those days, the design was done by the Punjab PWD. Okay. The construction was done by a company, Afghan Spalling. The design, of course, is following the British code. The then British code BE3 were, I think, 78. But then the design has been done by an MTech student from Punjab Engineering College, Ludhiana. You can imagine now, he is the one who proved actually what we always say for two meter height of the wall. He, he had designed a concrete, regular concrete wall and then a geosynthetic wall. Like that, for each height, they have done it now. He carried the cost now. Of course, he proves very well that beyond four meters, the economy achieved, of course, is always increasing actually. With the more height, we get more economy. That is what he proved actually well before the construction. By that only, the Punjab PWD was. Uh, Agreed has agreed actually to allow construction, construction, and immediately within a, probably an year or two, they constructed in the OCM city, OCM you know shootings uh, fellow Pagwada is a place. They constructed the middle of their main highway, uh, another wall actually. That was the history. 
Now I'm always fond of black cotton soils. Maybe we were born in that area, but then in different directions we try to go through that now. And these cracks are very familiar to all of you. And uh, so if you go to Canal Road, Andhra Pradesh, you know very well what is the fate now. It is in this case you are able to see a canal. It is a, you do call it a canal actually. No, no, it is simply you can say a drain or of course we call canal also. But then you can see within a few months of uh, repaving. You can see this entire thing moving into the side drain or into the canal this side, and then you can see the crack here. I mean, the opening is here now. So, in fact, uh, my early student, uh, Dr. G. V. Sazu, said, "Please, sir, uh, you get down at Kakinada from uh, from Hyderabad, and then we travel up to Vijayawada. See the condition of the roads actually. Then this is one of the things we inspected in those days." And then, of course, the solution of GPR is very simple. This is happening because the entire uh, base and entire we can call it, canal bank is moving into the canal actually. So we created a simplest site of wall actually. Maximum in this case is four meters, uh, but then it was not always so high. Also, we constructed a small wall actually in the slope of this canal actually. And uh, today we find that this is the wall which is constructed, and you find that now. This wall is intact for last two decades. In fact, the, the both the East Coast and West Coast engineers actually of the R&B Tourism Department they constructed on their own these small walls also. But mind you, I am just another few meters on this side of this actually where now wall is constructed. We can see this is a cut now. So slowly, slowly the road is getting into the canal. This is Natsupur Canal. Okay, Natsupur Main Canal actually. So you find that this is going to be damaging, and irrespective of for repaving many number of times, we find that this stage is going to be imminent. And slowly, slowly, our repair work has started. But this is there. So many structures we find um, both East and West Calvary. Uh, today, I can be addressed also where you can go. Yes, one of the few structures we built uh, around that area is, of course, at Pratapuram and Kakanada, and of course, right in Sagwatam. Uh, there are many such walls of Ankapali, many things. But I'm just showing you in these cases only walls which are affected by uh, black and soil. So in the my own hometown, Eluru, actually, in West Kerala district, you find that this is ground level now. So they removed the soil and replaced it with, uh, you can say, multiple layers of geocomposite, actually, reinforced geocomposite. And then about the ground, it's going to be much more. This is the Eluru Canal, actually. Uh, so you can see the condition of the construction now. Water level is all here now, almost at the surface. When you construct, start constructing, in the speed you made, actually, for doing this, already water is there now. Even in those difficult circumstances, they could consider a block wall actually without an issue. And then we go to Vijayawada. At Vijayawada, some of you must be knowing that in the year around 2000, actually, the wharf road, that means uh, near the Kalisar market actually, has collapsed completely and fell into the Krishna Eastern Main Canal. That is the same canal we have seen here, into this canal. This is partially foreign portion. This is some changes we are making in direction now. So, what happened actually is, 20 years before, probably 1980, uh, the wharf has also collapsed in the river, into the main canal. They reconstructed it in 1980, and then with, of course, under pile foundations, the entire thing has collapsed again into the canal. So at that time, obviously, we were called into picture. This is the failed portion, uh, complete collapse now. You see the other bridge now, this bridge, I don't know whether existing or not. But uh, even this other, this is, I'm talking of 200 meters, complete collapse now. Even this portion is ready to collapse. Why I'm talking of this is the entire 400 meters is now improved with all things. You can see the condition of the road also. There's that very heavy traffic. This is also market. And then all the buildings are there with the steel and everything else now. The traffic doesn't stop. So under those circumstances, we were called upon to give a design. So we gave a design of a, what we call a vessel mattress and a two-stage construction because up to the FR, FSL, full supply level of the canal, naturally, we had to do in the summer season only. And above that, so you can do later on. So this becomes ultimately about 11.11 11 meters and odd construction. It's very difficult to construct, actually. I'm not going to get details of that now. Uh, the entire vessel mattress has to be done in water only. And uh, there are no space of construction. So all the fascia panels are made at Ibrahim Patram, that is uh, position. And as I said, uh, in one panel, I mean, <coughs> uh, first uh, tire is made, of course. And then, of course, second tire is made subsequently. And uh, from a distance, of course, it looks quite nice. And it's not so nice as you think, because in nowhere compared to the modern finishing and things like that now. But you see, we're working under condition when water is not completely removed at all. We thought that this center cannot be closed. It's not never closed also. We're working two meters of water. 
under different conditions. Of course, from a distance on the other bridge, I've shown you uh, naturally these are uh, the goody ones I can see here now. On the bridge, everything looks uh, in Kidori, but it is still quite stable, despite so much construction being done around here now uh, of the new highway and the new bridge and things like this. This is still fine. So there is another thing which you could do. Why is it failed actually? In all the cases now, structures which are not working earlier or the infrastructure is not performing well has been restored. I am happy to also share with you that our geo grids have gone to Korea. And with that now, they also had a very very interesting fascia near the housing colony. So this fascia is developed by them. That means they struck some pieces, let us say, on the on the fascia blocks actually. Behind that is the tech fab geo grids, tech grid actually, made in India. And uh, all the walls actually are so stable, sometimes the construction is so good that this truck actually, of course, weighed around. And even the, you can say, protecting wall has not failed. Mind you, this is only floating. Basically, it's, it's not resting on this now. Of course, on the other side, there's a shoulder and things like this now. But they have been made so strong today, they could withstand the actual impact of the crash. And the wall is quite safe. Okay, vehicle is safe and wall is safe. So that is exceptionally strong installations of this kind of thing. Then we go to more flexible construction. Well, I'm moving to Punjab now, on the way to Simla. From Chandigarh, you find a, a tiny village called Darabasi. And there the construction is using gabions. So the gabion material, of course, is very common there. And then we have the same gabion material, gabion mesh, is used also for reinforcement. But what's going to happen now? If gabion is going to be used, and this is gabion now, uh, in case of heavy rain, obviously, the fines are going to move out now. So to prevent that now, we are using a geotextile as a filter. Okay, this white cloth is in between the um, soil fill and the gabion behind, if you give a fascia behind. So in the long section, this is what the whole going to look like. And you see these white patches. They are actually bags of uh, soil. And uh, soil plus what? You can see the next uh, year or two later, I was going on the same thing. I was firing. What is this happening? All around completely greenery now. I was happy to see this now. It it actually sort of looks like the a natural construction, basically. That means all along is, of course, green land and uh, you can say wheat and sugar cane farms. This is what you see here now. And you don't see any concrete here except the cash virus is dropped now. So I have so many pictures of that, basically. All around, it just looks green and green and green. So what the architect has done at the time is, in these bags, is also filled with the seeds now. So by the natural rainfall now, the seeds are given to this kind of uh, greenery, you can say, all around the wall. I, I like it. I always show this kind of picture. On the other hand, when we got very poor soil, we are moving to Rajmandri now. Um, long back, let us say, almost two decades back now. When they're doing four laning of the NH5, I mean, you know, those are called NH5, and uh, package is AP1920. So they are having these bridges both in Rasa Godavari and uh, Gautama Godavari. So the uncontrolled, obviously, the black cotton soil. Obviously, they have to. And this thickness of black cotton soil for both the bridge and both sides is varying between, say, four to eight meters, very softly. So various solutions of uh, reinforcing the base. With the geotextile, of course, there are things now. And here is, of course, what we call as a slope, reinforced slope. Uh, these are not um, arrows or something other, no? these are only just to mark the spacing only. So, it's, of course, this what is seen here in a uh, touching kind of thing is a drain. Okay, the point is that all of them are going to be slope. So, when you put a slope now instead of a wall, wall is almost vertical. A slope is steep, of course, in this case. And then, if you are putting uh, naturally a tire for that with a gap here, 1 to 1.5. Naturally, the, the the length of reinforcement is less. And then, of course, they put a plain slope now. So they cover this entire slope, actually, into three compartments. One, of course, long reinforcement, and then shorter reinforcement, and no reinforcement. So all this was studied scientifically. And then today, we have beautiful kind of structures, actually, uh, still there. So in this case, the steel columns are set as a strip foundation. Concrete blanks span between the columns. Geogrid is simply fixed to the facing exam by transverse rod. The geogrid is only fixed transverse masonry means that's only put around actually, deface faces, so on as possible. So, what is it you find is that very interesting construction now. And uh, the other side is Godavari. I mean, the bridge you can see here now, which is possible. And the finishing is there. 
So any one of you going to Siddhantam and beyond towards Rajamandri, you can, of course, you have to go over that. Out of the four approaches, three approaches have done it. Fourth one, they found there is 100 meters of clay. They couldn't dare construct it. So three approaches are like this. That means Siddhantam and Rawalpalam, on both sides you find this actually. This was done way before 2000 actually. And uh, two sorry, uh, uh, two tire construction in the Rubiguri, uh, view from Krishna River. And then, of course, we have the first four-tier construction in the country, uh, around 40 meters. Yes, you do find issues in this things. That means there have been some moments now. But definitely, we are learning a lot from that also. And we are learning a lot because this is a hilly area. What was oozing from inside the hill also. So some of them are not taken into account, actually. And probably, you know, that the visual people know that I think sometime around that time, there were such heavy rains that water was pouring into the hill material. Fill material was not as good as expected. So naturally, it became some kind of clay fill, actually. With clay fill, we know the problems are the start because the fill material always has to be uh, best made, being only sand. If you don't have sand, if you use any clay, particularly more than 10% clay, I'm not on the fines. Fines can't be more than 15%, clay can't be more than 10%. And in fact, it's a clean sand is always best now. So in this case, it didn't happen now. So there were some moments and there were some settlements, but I will tell you the structure is still intact. Working in that area itself now, they had uh, I think more than two lakh devotees going up and having that of the Durga. And then, of course, the mechanism follows under 40 meter uh, a slope created by my good friend uh, Naik. So, this Naik actually completed his design. This is Shilang bypass, and you can see steps of how he has done all this. Also. And then, finally, it will merge with the natural slope. Actually. You will not even know that there is a, a slope created. So that means you get a hill out of the situation. So these are the kinds of things. Again, okay? um, this is also I mean, Sadish Naik's the case only. Uh, Copper Keda, the Rupa station. Obviously, the Rupa station, we have a lot of ash available now. So this is probably one of the first uh, uh, walls he has built actually nearly vertical, perfectly servicing. And of course, we come to Bangalore port and wherein the soil was varied kind of soil. And then obviously, the thickness varying. And softness is varying, and there are many issues connected with that. So the uh, ground was partially improved by using, I mean, the existing soil, because we assume that it's consolidated now. We left it like that, but then the virgin soil, we put the stone columns actually, and over that we put a geotextile composite, a geo, you can say composite, a reinforcing composite, and uh, the construction was done because the poorness, weakness of the soil, the soil is filled with ash only. So first construction on the village with ash. So it is unique structures. These structures, any student can go and watch what is happening, what problems there, any movements there, any research there, and then learn lessons of that now. So that means we converted indirectly waste into wealth. Because the ash ponds, both at NTPC and uh, I think uh, steel plant, were there anyway. So we are consuming the waste into this now, and we are constructing it as a then structure, we are confining it now. We know that ash, when once confined, behaves very well now. And of course, here also we are using between stone columns and also we are using the natural conditions. So, the materials which are made in the country, geosynthetic made in the country. The finished structure is something like this. There are issues with respect to the apartments, you know. Maybe when I come there, I will take the students and explain to them. But then it's a fine structure and carrying all the weight. Then we move to Korba. And you can see this actually. It's not the height which is important. Of course, uh, the part height is a normal concrete wall only. But above that, they wanted to have a wall above this area. And then you see we have full height panel. The second full height panel and the first full height panel construction was the Duwada. I forgot to show you that slide actually. And next construction we have done at Korba. You see, this is also critical in many ways. You know, the slope is not critical of our concern. But then this is all heavy. Um, actually, the week is going now. Good strain. And one wish that nothing happens to this actually. Okay, so these are all critical and in a way sustainable now. Then, of course, earthquake resistance. In 92, we have major earthquake in Japan, Kobe earthquake we call now. And this picture is just taken before that. See, we have a service road and this is a uh, reinforced concrete wall. It's almost, you know, the Kobe line, actually, JR cable line means uh, it's almost like bullet train. Okay, immediately after that, now we find this. This whole structure has been found to be shaking and then it moved by probably 10 centimeters whereas all the structures never completely collapsed 
and you can see this e also even then also this structure nothing happened to this one this is a in fact we find that there is not a i mean uh, to my knowledge you now there is not a single reinforced soil wall actually irrespective of you can reinforcement maybe steel reinforcement maybe uh, strip reinforcement maybe geogrid reinforcement maybe geotextile reinforcement now they also ever failed actually unless the film material is very bad unless film material is not what is selected for design and if that is not done obviously there are problems and then of course in a railway cross section now we can use this this is being done in the country and estimated level now uh, in areas of uh, gujarat and all actually in the balas we are placing it now and whenever we are cutting now we can have two solutions we can cover it by road control mattresses or we can put a steep slope also so you see the very kind of construction it is not having any panel at all we are just pushing the geo grid or geo textile wrapping it around it is also called a wrap around construction or tuck back construction so even in simple railway track also in cutting in this case now actually we have we can have erosion control systems we can also create drainage systems actually in both sides as it was about to take care of by the junction drain and then also if required a deep cut can also be reinforced by stabilized by using a reinforced wall moving around to other things now you said that it's protect land and water resources by preventing soil erosion and supporting vegetation in the country now particularly in gujarat now so many canals are you can say rehabilitated so many canals in black on soil wherein the water has really stopped going or is leaking completely they are all improved with canal lining i am talking of further protection of water resources uh, by minimizing erosion actually so erosion disturb the soil's natural structure and its ability to store water and support vegetation growth this can lead to a reduction in biodiversity groundwater recharge essential nutrients and soil biodata in turn this harms rangeland forests and other natural systems some of them are in the statistics that from the you can say area of both ganga and brahmaputra into the bay of bengal now the sediment which comes every year is 550 million tons every year even if you assume 10 percent is only soil you can imagine 550 divided by i mean 10 percent is 55 million tons the nearest data such data we got is mexico well for mexico wherein it's only 300 odd million tons actually and if you imagine that much more sediment is going that means all the good soil of the entire plains of both ganga and brahmaputra are simply walking away to the bay of bengal and if you imagine now what is going to happen narmada tapti godavari mahanadi kaveri all these rivers also are being giving this kind of fines actually into the rivers now so today we have a system of uh, not only erosion control there are books written by georgia state wherein it's a title book master it is actually a, a manual manual of sediment and erosion control that means they want to prevent the erosion from the base sediment itself means of coming into the water and then trying to stabilize it we try to better protect it so a lot of studies have been done by us in many places i will not have much time to that but one example i'll give you we have a, a bridge across godavari at the uh, godavari <clears throat> and uh, naturally this bridge is going to span from west coast district uh, chinchinada to east coast district uh, dindi and uh, the approaches both side approaches are of course in black and soil the black and soil is anywhere from 20 to 25 meter thickness and in between it's got lenses of sand actually and so it was presumed to be supported by geo cell of 1 meter thickness and uh, also because we are not having any land beyond this now it needs a hand restraint also it and it matters now so this was done of course and you are able to see the mattress now the geo cell mattress where geo cell is made with uh, uh, polymer grids and then filled with gravel and then also another layer of uh, grid is placed and then we can roll it also for compaction and then everything is constructed after construction the whole thing now you find that we can place now a rolled erosion control blanket on this now over that you put seedlings of grass now to create a thing uh, i will show you this also this is the non oven coir geoda style actually or roll roll erosion control coir mattress you can call it and this was spread now and seedlings of grass are planted and by a few weeks naturally it start growing and then today you can always find this like this now, completely green mind you the space available is going to be so small for us also so they have to construct a, not only embankment but also a small wall of 3 meter height that's what you find here now and so this forms a ledge now and just other the back side of this is really the river godavari gotham godavari so you find that in all these things actually 
the embankment of settling also the embankment of the calculated uh, uh, settlement of this entire area of this highest portion uh, near the wetment is about 1.47 meters so obviously this is going to settle slowly and slowly that's where you find these patches so when the settlement is actually they are going to begin uh, make the road all right i think uh, to my knowledge you know the settlement has gone now by more than one meter the construction happened in 2000 actually so but the road is working uh, without any issues at all actually other side also i'm showing you both sides now and uh, this is one of the example of uh, stabilizing the entire structure and then greening the sides now imagine that you are going to put a turfing on this one the turfing the, not turfing sorry the pitching on this the pitching in those days was costing 120 pesos square meter okay whereas the turfing here of course was costing us 40 meters i mean 40 pesos square meter so savings in money imagine that such a high 12 meter high uh abutment let us say is completely full of stones on it here it's completely made green people do picnic over this and every year obviously in summer this may dry and again in monsoon it picks up actually because the roots are really there to prevent further erosion of uh, river banks and uh, you can say coastal erosion now there are various many solutions if the solutions can vary from due to the bags, due to the tubes, containers, there are so many solutions now. We will actually quickly go over them now. This is, of course, the wet end work in Sharda River uh, in Bihar and UB. So you find that how they place these bags actually, supported by something below. And then you can see that already sand is settling there, solid is settling there, and minimizing the erosion. And uh, then we go to Pada. And some of you know that Upada, of course, has been subjected to a lot of damage because of uh, the coastal erosion now. So we had placed a, a geotestal tube, tube is what you find, and a shroud of, uh, you can say, uh, gabions now. These are rope gabions, actually, polymer rope gabions made by Garware. And in fact, even this is also made by Garware uh, today, part in fiber. This is how it looks like, actually. And there are some issues in some small lines. But then what I'm going to show you is something very interesting that uh, the uh, the shoreline was uh, examined actually by the AB Space Application Center and then so they published a paper in one of the conferences uh, held in Bhavaneshwar actually for shoreline evaluation along Upada coast in Andhra Pradesh using multi-temporal satellite images and model-based approach. So their conclusion is like this now. So we are here at Upada, this white line is here Upada and uh, naturally this entire shoreline they have examined actually for uh, a Christian deposition. So what they say is something very interesting. They examined this image in 89 to uh, 2018 Upara coast. And uh, during this period, actually, they say the accretion is 1.4 meters per year. And erosion is, of course, 2.22 meters per year. But the maximum rate could be the average one. Maximum could be plus 7.8 and 8.0, minus 8.09. The erosion activities are moderately high compared to the accretion study area during this period. However, Erosion activities are not occurred in the middle region of the Pada coast, which is, of course, supported by the entire um, support system created by geo tubes, actually. There's a full fledged paper on the subject. Uh, they are done by them now. What all studies they have done now uh, before the coast and we are, I mean, before the improvement and after the improvement. And uh, I have just given a small information only that this is called sustainability. By spending a few crores now, we were able to protect the village, I should say, more or less permanently. Let us watch and see. Then, of course, in the same way I said now, they prevent floods and protect lives and livelihoods and property. So geosynthetics, of course, can be used to improve dikes instead of our design. And we can use them with a combination of natural materials to give you strength, flexibility, imperiousness, drainage, durability, robustness, and degradation control. Look here, there is no mechanism directly available to us and flood control also. And of course, when the things are durable, the enduring durability of geosynthetics saves resources, time and cost. Why? Geosynthetic materials can provide long, useful lifespans for the projects that use them, maintaining performance for decades, and sometimes with the potential to last more than 100 years. Why potential? Almost all the reinforced soil walls are designed for 110 years' life. That's a beauty. So that means the material which are using for geosynthetics can withstand. Now go over back to Sagbatnam. So when the improvement in the runways are done, and the new taxi is built actually, 
So they use the PVDs. The PVDs, if you have a little drain, is again digital made. The, I think at the time it was made by Garbare. So this system has worked perfectly in causing the consolidation to settlement. And then, of course, we had everything else. So, of course, I don't read this now. Whenever we have such landslides, naturally today, many structures, I can't show you all the pictures today because there's no time. But then many structures have been built these days. Landslides is a topic for us now. In the sense that our topic, primary topic today is coastal erosion and landslide prevention. This is the main thing on which people are not on work. A lot of work is done in the country, around the world, on both the pavements, you can say highway pavements, rural roads, as also the reinforced walls. A lot of work is done and continues to be done, but practice is more. But in the era of both coastal erosion and landslides, the work done is limited and practice is limited. So that is actually my focus area still, despite the fact that I am over 75. So the other thing, of course, is we come back to you now sustainability. Now I understand we are building sustainable structures actually. So you go back to the contribution of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So we know that there are 17 of them now, and quite a few of them deal with infrastructure, deal with education, deal with water, deal with many things actually. So the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals is a call for action for countries to unite to improve lives and protect the environment. It's its remit is bold, from tackling climate change to supporting gender equality, from responsible production to championing peace and justice worldwide. If we are able to spend our money well, if our infrastructure is going to be better off, naturally, probably we can spend more money on education, more money on health care and things like that. Now we continue to spend more and more money for flood control, for famine and this and that. Naturally, we are spending our money very thinly because of these issues of uh, uh, transient structures. And uh, so, naturally, to conclude, the usage generally replace scarce raw materials. We know that the steel is always short, cement and aggregate is short. Today, aggregates means both kind of course aggregates. And also, we don't earth. We are paying so much money for a good quality earth also. They are obviously good alternatives to conventional designs. Alternative means, actually, we have a reinforced soil wall. We have a gravity wall. We have a reinforced concrete wall. Obviously, we are going to think of what is the most cost-effective one. But in some cases, like waterfront structures, like in Black and so they become the only means of construction. Then money is not the only thing. It's just, it's just sustainability is important, and that can be provided by the geosynthetics. Then, of course, the other advantage is that they can be installed. They can be easily taken on shoulder to forest areas, to flood areas, or to any other uh, difficult approach areas, actually. And obviously, the Minister of Textiles today is very active in white lights and industrial industries. And out of the, I think, eight or ten technical test sales, geotestiles happen to be one of the prime areas on which the government is doing a lot of focus. I think they are also sponsoring many projects now uh, on various aspects of geosynthetics, which I considered till now. So, to summarize now, geosynthetics are bona fide engineering materials. Test methods and designs are available. Basic advantage of geosynthetics is quality control of factory manufactured products. And in fact, most of the good factories today have uh, their own quality control devices. They have one of the best approved uh, accredited laboratories also, where you can go and inspect their products now. Previously, you had to go to Malaysia or London or some other place to go and see the um, production and, of course, testing and process. But today, we don't go anywhere else. You can just go to the factory. Most of them have got their own laboratories. Should you want tested? Yes, we established laboratory Jaipur as for third party testing. Then, products must be accompanied by construction quality control and construction quality assurance. So, one is MCQ and another is construction quality control. So both are important. And of course, to the extent of field performance, uh, mostly visual now, yes, there have been one in 100 problems. When 100 construction one construction is always a problem because in the sense that, uh, you know, things can go wrong any place in design and construction and choice of materials and many things now. It's like any other structure. So the potential, of course, is awesome. And uh, we are very happy with the Ministry of uh, Infrastructure, particularly both railways, roads and railways now. I think uh, all of you know that the amount of money which the, the government is going to pour into the even road infrastructure is awesome. Maybe something like, um, very difficult to say the words also. So much money is being given that probably it's difficult for us to spend the money also. So towards this goal, I have been always following this now. I mentioned 1990 book now. We brought out a book in 2014 also, Advanced in Geosynthetics now. Uh, this is uh, done at uh, Spanish University, released by the 
former Director General of Road Development, Ms. Evi Sinha, who also happened to be my student, actually. And then we also revise our book on GFC testing, a world-class book on the subject of testing of uh, international level, actually, both considering the American standards, British standards, and Indian standards, of course. This has been revised uh, recently, I think, two years back, just before the COVID started, actually, in 19. A revision of the book I brought out after coming here in 2008, actually, 2019 is revised, actually. Then, of course, uh, uh, particularly to suit our state, actually, I brought out a summary of some of them, you know, growing group strategies, who includes other forms of improvement also. And another book we brought out, Ethel Infosent Design Construction, because, you know, we had to spread the message of geosynthetics among the engineers, actually. We did a lot of workshops in the then uh, undivided under the state also. In Sabatna, we did workshop. In Tirupati, we did one. In Hyderabad, we had done one. Vijayawada, we had done one. Now, we keep promoting this method to make people understand what is the value addition we are going to do. So, finally, we summarize the road ahead. Geosynth solutions should be fully investigated on every infrastructure project to ensure they meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I think that is the difference of sustainability. What we're going to say is that we should investigate fully because the GVR has given a good lecture. It doesn't mean that we should use the geosynthetics. No. We compare with an existing solution, normally in geosynthetic engineering. If that doesn't give satisfaction or if such structures have failed due to some reason or other, then we do an alternate to geosynthetics now. So what is what it says clearly is this solution should be fully investigated on every infrastructure project to ensure they meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That is the definition we are given to sustainability. I think that is what is being done. And that is the reason I have picked up uh, at least my own experiences of at least uh, more than 25 years actually and i picked up those instances which are around the Andhra Pradesh state actually such so that all engineers are aware of them and gain confidence in using it further in the most difficult situations which can't be easily solved by conventional solutions and uh, you know we follow the norms survey jana let all people be happy and content Loka Samastha Sukhna Bhavantu. May the entire universe live in harmony. That is where we are going to be in peace. At the end, I bow to my Guruji, Acharya Krabhardwaja, who led me to this place and who is a ever loving spirit. <coughs> Don't in mind this. Thank you very much for the patient hearing. Namaskar. So, thank you then. Sir, shall I ask you one question, sir? Sure. This is the Dr. Asar Karate, visiting professor, Record Level Engineering College, sir. Uh -huh. Today, I had an excellent and informative lecture from you, sir. I'm very grateful to you. But uh, one question is, uh, particularly in Andhra Pradesh, as well as in India, Himalaya region, and uh, near Durga Temple, and uh, near Tirupati hilly regions, uh, whenever any tremors occur, uh, uh, sliding, uh, uh, rock sliding will be happening. Mm -hmm. Why don't we use uh, geo networks and geo, geo net so that uh, we can stop falling off uh, these uh, uh, stones obstructing the traffic on the uh, highway roads or, or hilly, hilly roads? In fact, for, any, for, for any problem, there are different solutions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One solution for rock fall production is there is a system for rock fall production which I am not touching here now. I am not touching that subject now. Yes, it depends on space available. If more space available, okay. we provide a, a support system okay. for that, like a wall. Okay. If only rocks are falling down, oh, rocks are falling right. down, then the rock fall production system is there. And I am familiar with that. We have been doing it in, uh, in different places. Because when I visited European countries, uh, uh, this GNX facility was provided. Uh, at so many places. But no, the internet is not going to solve the problem of uh, rock fall, actually. See, yes, those pigeon nets are only very simple. If a big boulder comes, they will simply break. It's a subject by itself now. Yes, sir. Sometimes yes. later, we can always uh, discuss that, actually. Uh, for example, uh, uh, such work is done Konkan Railway. I'm aware of it now. And it's being done in uh, Himalayas. Ultimately, it's a question of money. If the government wants to be done, we have got the technology. That's what I want to tell you. We have technology available now, airports are being built up now, time is under for me to 
in all the cases so we could have uh, things around us only in andhra pradesh but the point is that now any hill problem can be solved in multiple ways it may require a wall it may require a slope it may require drainage it may require uh, drainage may surface drainage may require uh, inward drainage it may require uh, rock nailing or rock bolting and then it will also require in addition a rock for protection system so that is required you are very right now what system to follow depends on site conditions and uh, naturally the costing will be involved in that thank you sir thank you very much so we will try to plan some uh, some other lecture sometime on uh, uh, protecting uh, rock falls from hill slopes sir yeah, yeah. so as you said uh, it is all together uh, a vast subject there are several uh, techniques mm. so right from rock bolting uh, even yeah, yeah. we can uh, have path to protection right, right. through rock uh, protection barrier construction as well and so important subject for you people is more important also sir, yeah, also uh, definitely we have taken a note of uh, professor uh, uh, satya ramakrishna reddy garu and uh, we uh. try to address uh, that issue in uh, the lectures to come in future okay. look at me uh, any more questions from the participants hello hello yes sir i'm uh, i'm uh, ganapati uh, from uh, dubai i am working for uh, petrofac uh, we do oil and gas industry yeah uh, are, we are from uh, dubai uh, i'm 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 indian but working in uh, dubai yeah fine i'm also from andhra pradesh visakhapatnam uh, just uh, actually we are also using in many projects uh, we do uh, use a lot of geotextile geogrids and uh, you know gabbins and all this stuff the many cases what happens in oil and gas industry unlike uh, the infrastructure uh, we do have some slopes and all the erosion is a big uh, you know issue so in oil and gas industry they don't go for any uh, vegetation basically not unlike uh, infrastructure yeah so in that cases uh, we are we are really struggling because this uh, geo geosynthetic material is uh, will not good for uv exposure so definitely the it always goes as a combination with the vegetation so do you see any any material uh, which 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 will directly can be used as a erosion protection on the slopes without any vegetation i don't i, I didn't come across such things no there are two things you know the erosion control uh, i could have given a lecture on that in fact i chose this one anyway to make generate but yeah. then as you are aware already If you want a biodegradable civilization, we have a lot of uh, quarry geotextiles and both both kinds of organic and non-organic blankets, as also jute geotextiles. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, some places I've seen also uh, that do let us something like gabion mesh. They stitch the non-organic geotextile also, and then use it in some structures, let us say as a fascia. And in fact, I've seen in Netherlands also such kind of things happening. but then this depends upon what kind of rainfall we are going to have what kind of slope we are going to there what kind of soil which is going to be there mm -hmm. and if there doesn't work naturally we have to go for more uh, let us say hard solutions so hard solutions could mean uh, obviously with very good filter pitching or riprap or it could mean uh, also obviously gabions gabion matrices can be used for this purpose so there may techniques for that it's a subject by itself now so uh, also it could mean that uh, uh, we can use you know the 3d meshes which are available which includes a synthetic mesh and the natural fibers also because you know natural fibers require a certain watering also and kind of uh, climatic conditions for it to grow to begin with is it not for the tuffing to grow and continue to be there every year uh, if the growth is uh, naturally not proper of the tuffing obviously um, it's not going to function uh, in the sense that if it is a dry season for 2 uh, 3 years no there's a problem for that is it and then the synthetic one will take role actually the advantage of this green one i mean of the biodegradable solution is that uh, the roots also help us in time to stabilize the slope the blades of the grass are going to help us in time to reduce velocity so the many advantages of that kind of thing in fact i have done a lot of work on that subject itself of natural fibers and how it going to work and things like that but today's focus essentially is on today means what i have done in the recent past essentially trying to use both jute and coir specialized uh, both the products actually Uh, for 
you can say some good improvement in rural roads now so a lot of work has been done in kerala for the purpose uh, we got installed in some places manipur also for that with the jute blended with some plastic also uh, because jute uh, degrades very quickly actually yeah yeah uh, so materials are being made for this purpose that's where there's a lot of scope for all of us to work also to practice also sure but then the, the problem is specific always you know it's site specific yeah. right 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 mm. It's very important. So the site specific is very important. That, that depends on many factors like wind or the rainfall intensity and etc. and uh, all this stuff. Yes. So the biotechnology has worked very well in the country, many places. In fact, I have separate presentations on that. We can show exactly, and uh, also in hilly areas, also, and uh, all kinds of things actually. Right. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your uh, fantastic experience uh, all over 20 or uh, 25 years. <laughs> no. I have seen a lot of uh, really case studies. Very excellent, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. These are all published also, but I put them together because to show that they're sustainable, at least with, a, with an own limited life now. That's right, what sir. I wanted to focus, actually. Right. What did you say your name is? My name is uh, Ganapati Rao, sir. Dr. Kunni Ganapati, ah, Ganapati Rao. Rao. I did so my PhD in, in, in South Korea. I'm in Vishak, but I'm currently I'm in Sharjah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any more queries? So, if, if there are no queries, uh, I thank Professor uh, J.V. Rao for his uh, highly informative lecture. SAR has uh, clearly explain about various uh, geosynthetic materials starting from geotextile geogrids geocells geocomposites geonets geotubes and geobags and uh, he has uh, presented uh, interesting case studies to demonstrate uh, how effectively these uh, geosynthetic materials uh, can be used in uh, sustainable constructions so he has uh, explained uh, that uh, using geosynthetic reinforcement in payment construction not only enables uh, us to have reduced payment thickness, but also, importantly, it improves performance. So, apart from that, uh, in reinforced at the retaining wall, being a flexible one compared to conventional retaining wall, they have more resistance to earthquakes. And also, in construction of reinforced at retaining walls, we can uh, even consider uh, using uh, marginal materials, using geocomposites as uh, reinforcing material. And uh, coming to uh, embankment constructions to support uh, highways or roadways, uses of uh, synthetic reinforcement in the form of high stiffness geotextile or geogrid uh, helps us in uh, steepening the side slopes of uh, the embankments, thereby reduce the requirement of uh, fill for construction of embankment for a given height. And not only that, in embankment construction, we can as well uh, conserve using marginal uh, materials like uh, some industrial waste, <clears throat> such as uh, fly ash, uh, bottom ash, uh, steel slag and all. And uh, uh, coming to backfill material also behind, uh, even if it is conventional retaining wall. So all the time backfill material is specified as uh, free draining material. So with uh, the present available uh, geo uh, composites, wherein uh, geo net is embedded in between uh, geo textiles by using that uh, even marginal local available soils can be used as backfills behind the retaining walls. Uh, and uh, he has uh, given uh, case studies uh, pertaining to different reinforced soil structures uh, uh, that took place in different parts of uh, country during the last uh, two to three decades. So within uh, the given uh, short time for his lecture, uh, uh, he has uh, covered the subject matter in a detailed uh, manner. So I thank you very much, sir for uh, presenting uh, uh, highly informative material. So I hope the participants uh, 
uh, teachers from uh, engineering colleges um, practicing engineers research scholars post graduate and uh, graduate students of civil engineering so all of them might have gained uh, uh, sufficient information to understand about geocentrics and since uh, now they got the idea about uh, the functions of different materials they will be able to appreciate uh, different uh, different reinforced soil structures which they come across in literature and also they will also think of uh, going for reinforced soil structures so thank you very much sir for accepting our request and for delivering uh, uh, highly informative lecture on this auspicious day which is marked as world engineering day thank you sir on behalf of department of civil engineering andhra university college of engineering and igs visakhapatnam chapter so uh, our vice chancellor uh, professor pvgd prasad reddy registrar professor v krishna mohan and principal college of engineering professor p srinivas rao garu have requested me to convey their regards uh, to you uh, for uh, making it uh, possible to deliver this uh, special lecture uh, on this day sir i take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, the president of uh, indian geotechnical society professor uh, nk samadhiya for gracing the occasion and uh, i request once again uh, professor narendra samadhiya to add uh, his uh, remarks on the lecture uh, before uh, we close the webinar sir please sir and before we start so i would like to special welcome dola ji dola rai choudhury uh, she has been a strong support of geosynthetics my colleague in making the bas yeah, good afternoon dola rai choudhury hope you are doing well yeah i think next time you should call her not me you know my hair is not there <laughs> by next time <laughs> sir okay. i think uh, they are more youthful than what they look in concept and delivery and i think uh, that question by some i think mr reddy garu on Sir. land slides and things like that. I think she has been doing human work in this, uh, many fronts, actually. Uh, I think uh, we see, we look forward to her in, in many okay, ways sir. in, in uh, practicing the aesthetic. Yeah, I'll be in touch with her, sir. Yeah, you should be in touch with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know her uh, since uh, she was uh, interacting uh, with IIT Madras yeah. some uh, two and a half decades back. Uh, till <laughs> yeah. that time, uh, since then, I was knowing her. Uh, uh dollar ai choudhury yeah sir so i know uh, her since she was dollar sarkar actually <laughs> sir <laughs> before marriage i mean and uh, her husband also is now chief engineer at cbwd distinguished engineer i think you should sir. call both of them to a next activity i think he can speak what can go wrong in subject also <laughs> what should be done okay. on subject also sir. Sir. very eminent uh, engineer actually so i think i'm so delighted that we are here dollar ji so samadhiya sorry i stopped in between but i thought uh, we should at least have a word with friends yes mr samadhi uh, sir it was a really uh, very informative lecture it looked like uh, i am sitting in the class in 1988 spring semester <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, i'm sure that all of us uh, are have been benefited by this particular lecture and we'll try to include some of the concepts in our uh, consultancy projects also so thank you so much sir and thank you uh, professor reddy thank you sir okay. thank you then namaskar so finally i thank uh, one and all for uh, attending to this webinar and making it a grand success and we look forward to have you all uh, in near future in some other important event sir thank you all bye for now sure. thank bye. you thank you very much sir thank you very much okay. So I request the participants to kindly fill in the feedback forms before leaving.
Vamsi, Vamsi, are you there? Are Chaitanya? Yeah. 